Wow. Today is officially first Sunday of springtime. Tell the person next to you, we survived winter. <laughs> we made it. By the way, we don't have a bad winter, right? We, we really are blessed here. And so enjoy new season. Welcome to Charisma. This is James. I'm one of the pastors here welcoming you to our 11 a.m. service. How about the worship team today, amen? Oh, good to hear. Sing that song in Christ alone. That's a classic. So we continue our journey with Jesus. If you are new to our church, we are on a series called Journey with Jesus. We are saying that life is a journey. It's not just about the destiny. It's the journey. And so along the journey, we are going to the steps and stops of Jesus when he was here on earth as we are preparing for Easter. How many of you would like to have a heart like Jesus? Amen. 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 All of us, right, as Christians, right, the greatest compliment for your children is when your, they will, your friends will tell you, you look like your mom, you look like your dad. Because there's no joy for us as parents to see that our kids are becoming like us for the good. Amen? For the good. So we want to become like Jesus Christ. So if you look at the next slide, in Christ alone, this is our hero, Jesus Christ. I'd like to share a message about a heart like Jesus. Our inspirational verse is found in Matthew 15 verse 8. So I want you to read it aloud, Charisma, one, two, three. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts is far from me. I made a, 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 a just forget my, forgive my, uh, uh, forget that. But their heart is far from me. Do you know it's possible that you are in a room like this, you're singing, you're clapping, you're raising your hands, but God is not just impressed with what you're doing in the outside, He's looking at your heart. And Jesus one day attended church in a synagogue, they're doing all the whole nine yards, the, the, the ritual, the ceremony, the celebration, but Jesus said, I'm not impressed. And then he said this, these people honor me with lip service, but their heart is far from me. Now, let me just ask you this. Do you know it's possible that you are in close proximity with the person, but you, your heart is far away from that person? Is that possible? Right? Sometimes married couple, you're... you're been married for so many years and sometimes you feel like you're just roommates that your heart is not going toward your spouse or sometimes with a friend so this is possible same thing with your relationship with Jesus that sometimes you're just going through the motion going to church reading the Bible doing your Christian thing but where is your heart God is after your heart in fact God says, above all else, guard your heart. Because your heart is where the issue flows. Your heart is the swell springs of life. If your heart goes, your mind goes, your body follows. Heart is the control area or the center point of your life. Now we're talking today, having a heart like Jesus. Do you, do you want to have a heart like Jesus? Come on, Charisma. Amen. Amen. I want to have a heart like Jesus. Now, here's the big idea. God did not call us just to like Jesus, but to become like Jesus. Read it aloud with me, Charisma. God did not call us just to like Jesus, but to become like Jesus. You know, the word like is a phenomenon because of favors. I like you. Press like, press like. You know, God doesn't just want you to like Him. 
It's like a friend request and a friend body body. No, God wants you to become like Him. To become like Jesus. Now we're going to the heart of Jesus today. And now let me just reveal to you what's your heart. Basically, there are four dominant life principles. Everybody say with me, DLP. These are the four dominant life principles that we have. First is you make a choice or you make a decision based on this. Number one, what's happening around me? Everybody say circumstances. <laughs> Isn't that true? When the circumstance of your life is bad, you feel bad. When the circumstance of your life is up and about, you feel up and about. Your life is like a roller coaster of emotion, basically, you make decision, what's happening? What's happening around me? Another dominant life principle is what you call, everybody say with me, convenience. convenience. What's easy? You always make decision based on what's easy. Can I ask you today, what's easy? To lose weight or to gain weight? <laughs> right? Oh, we love those stuff, right? Oh my gosh. What is easy? To lose your temper or hold it? Lose your temper, right? Oh, you made me mad. You're getting into my nerves. And when you make decisions based on what's easy, because it's just convenient for you. Another dominant life principle, this is what they call criticism. Everybody say criticism. What will others think? <laughs> I purposely misspell it, right? What will others think? If your life is always based on the approval of others, when you make a decision, what will my parents think? What will my friends think? What will the people say? What will this? If you live your life based on the opinions of others, let me tell you, it's hard. Can I help you out? Tell the person next to you, he's your friend, not your enemy. You cannot please everybody please get away with your desire to be approved by others to be liked by others whether you like it or not you cannot please everybody jesus the most perfect man has a lot of haters even jesus wasn't able to do that so here's the thing Conviction. Everybody say convictions. convictions. Now, the word conviction today has a bad rap, right? When you hear the word conviction, it said, okay, what are you convicted for? DUI, drugs, assault. And we have a negative co connotation about conviction. But the word conviction here is very powerful. It's a deeply held belief that guides your life. What do I believe in? It's like today. Your conviction is Sunday it's a day to worship the Lord. I want to gather together with a group of people that love Jesus and love my Lord. I want to come to church. That's my conviction. Amen, somebody. Amen. Now, I want you to see the conviction of Jesus because this revealed to us his heart. By the way, once again, do you, have, do you want to have a heart like Jesus? Amen. Very simple. Two things. Everybody say two things. Amen. Say this with me. I must care what Jesus cares about. Say it again. I must care what Jesus cares about. The first thing is I must care what Jesus cares about. And the other thing is I don't care what Jesus doesn't care about. Okay? Two things. Number one, when Jesus was here on earth, you know what Jesus cares about or who Jesus cares about? Everybody say with me, the crowds. Let's read this verse together. This is awesome charisma. Let's read it. Matthew 9, 36. Let's read it together. Read it aloud. Then he saw the crowds. He had compassion on them because they were what? Harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Let's read this again slowly. One, two, three. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Let me ask you this today. When you see a crowd, what do you usually feel? Oh my gosh, look at the mall. It's so crowded. I can even find a parking spot. 
When you see a crowd, what do you usually feel? Look at the traffic along 405. Oh, look at that crowd. When you go to downtown Seattle, oh, look at the crowd. They're harassing me. Oh, when, do, when you see the crowd, do you say, God bless you, harassed and helpless? <laughs> Usually, you get mad, right? You get upset, right? Because most of us, if you will admit it on that, we suffer from EDD. By the way, what's ADD? Attention Deficit Disorder. A lot of people are suffering from ADD. I'm, a, I'm an ADD person. That's why God hooked me up with a wife who is A, B, C, D, E, F, G. God is so wise because I'm scattered all over the place. And God gave me a navigator. My wife is A, B, C, D, E. E, D, D means empathy deficient disorder. If you'll be honest, most of the time, when you see a need, when you see a problem, I say, that's not my problem. I don't care. That's, that's their life. We don't want to get into their mess. And sometimes it's good, but most of the time it's just a sign you are having EDD, empathy deficiency disorder. So please don't feel guilty because the disciples who were with Jesus are suffering from EDD. When they saw the crowds, look at the response of the disciples. Jesus had compassion. Let's read together. He's the disciples. That evening, the 12, the disciples came to him and said, it is already past time for supper, and there's nothing to eat here in the desert. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy some food. So what they're saying, Jesus, it's inconvenient. We are in the desert. Jesus, right now, look at the circumstances. No 7-Eleven in the desert. No, no, no McDonald's. Jesus... Look at the circumstances right now. Look at, look at the, the place we are in. Send the crowds away. But Jesus did not send the crowds away. Now, do you want to have a heart like Jesus? Yes. Jesus cares about the crowd. I just want you to see this, church. I, saw, I, I showed to you last Sunday, but I, I'm, I'm vision casting. Back in the day, 1970, you see this sign along I-5 freeway. Will the last person leaving Seattle turn out the lights? Because there was a ma mass exodus of people leaving Seattle because no jobs, uh, got laid off from Boeing right after Vietnam War. This is like a, this is like a, a ghost town. But times have changed. Did you know from 2013 to 2015, this is the census, Seattle tops list of the fast-growing cities. Millions of people are moving here. Brother Steve was telling me, Pastor, there was a time there's just one lane along 405. Imagine one lane along 405, right? Could you just imagine that? But now even five lanes along 405 is not enough. They're widening because people are coming. Listen to me carefully. The crowds that God is bringing to Seattle, they have soul and they have a need and they need Jesus. Amen, somebody? Amen. And we should embrace them. God is bringing the word to our very doorsteps. You know, Jesus cares about the crowd. Every now and then, I look at this picture. His name is Kent. He came from Montana. He told us his story. His family broke up, and he was despised, lost his job, lost his house. And nowhere to go, he decided to try his luck, went to Seattle. He lives in a neighbor with a friend in the neighborhood here. And early in the morning, he will ride a bike. He has no car. Drive the bike all the way to Mukulteo to go to the golf course. He works there. And every now and then, he would see the sign, Charisma Christian Center. Charisma. Then one day, he decided, let me just step in here. I need a community. We love on him. We care for him. Basically, we love him to Jesus. He was suicidal and things like that, and, and God healed him. That's one of the crowds. And I say this to myself, to see a person cross over from loneliness to joy, feeling hopeless to finding hope because of Jesus, is a sight I will always treasure. 
He's now back to Washington. He found a job in Spokane. We still connect and we talk and, and, and text and email. It's one of the crowds. Let me bring you home further, church. This is part of our joy and happiness as a congregation. Seven o'clock in the morning, the crowds are already lined up. The charisma people are still sleeping in. <laughs> Seven o'clock in the morning, lined up all the way there, waiting for backpacks to be given away every summer. That's the crowd. Whenever I look at those pictures, look at this picture, look at those faces, look at, those, look, look at the faces of those children, continue, look at that. It makes me joy, right? Look at this, 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 this girls holding hand in hand with paints painting. They're happy because they received their new backpacks. Look at this one family. They just migrated from Russia or from Ukraine, and then they're going to school in America, and they heard we're giving away backpacks with supplies. That's the crowd. We have a lot of families who are coming to the Lord now, coming to church because of that backpack giveaway. And case in point, I want to honor our friend, Brother John. Are you in the house? John, raise your hand. Come on, somebody. That's Brother John. He first came to church. He brought his kid to, to, to one of our backpack giveaway. And he will love them. He's coming. And, and last time we were cleaning the church, and, and he said, Pastor, I, I, I'm a professional carpet cleaner. He, he, he cleaned basically all the carpet at the church. Thank you, John. Amen. The crowd. When Jesus saw the crowd, his heart was moved. And then he said, they're harassed. And they're helpless. Because they are like sheep without a shepherd. You want to have a heart like Jesus? Be ready to be disturbed. Be ready sometimes to be crowded in by the crowd. Be ready to be sometimes taking your, taking, taking your spot that you think it's yours, taken by one of the crowds. Who's in the crowd, by the way, during the time of Jesus? The tax collector. Who's in the crowd? Come on, talk back to me. The sick. Who else? The demon possessed. Who else? Who's in the crowd? I'm sorry? The broken people. Come on, talk back. Who's in the crowd? The lepers, the despised, the outcasts, the people that people shun away from, but people embrace them. The people that most of us don't like. Jesus liked them. You want to have a heart of Jesus? A heart like Jesus? Jesus cares about the crowd. Amen, church, somebody. That's why we extend services 9 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 5 p.m. Because we want to bring Jesus to different nationality, different times. We don't say, oh, let's just have two services or one services anyway. We got a building. We got a church. It's all enough. For Let me just tell you this, Charisma. As long as there's one friend in your friend's list that is not saved, we must still grow as a church. Because if you, don't, if you say it's okay, we're saved, ask for and no more, you are telling your friends you can go to hell. Church, let's love the crowd. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Sometimes they're nasty. Sometimes bombs are flying all around. Or you're hanging out in the crowd. But that's what Jesus died for them. Come on, church. Amen. Jesus loved the crowd. And you know who else Jesus cares about? The church. Everybody say, Jesus cares about the church. You know, the church is what Jesus died for. Let's read this together. Let's read this together, this verse. Ephesians 5, 25. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up. You know, the, you know how Jesus treated the church? He said, he's my bride. Husbands, are you proud about your bride? Yes. Amen, somebody. If somebody will come to me, PJ, I like you, but I hate Sharon, you'll be in trouble with me. Because this is my bride. I love her to death. She's my friend. 
You know, as a pastor, one of my joys is when I do weddings, I'll be up close and personal and get the best view when there's two in love couples looking at each other that, that they cannot wait for me to say, you may now kiss the bride. <laughs> right? <laughs> I get up close and personal. I was sitting here, and J Jerry was here, and the door opened. Here comes Jerry, and said, dang, <laughs> J J the, the Jerry okay. said, hey, stay still, man. You wait. <laughs> Husband loved the wife. This, this captures it all. Look at this picture. Every time I look at this next picture, look at this. Oh, my gosh. See? It's like John said, oh, wow. I'm married to the Miss Washington. <laughs> and I'm just right there. That's the picture of Jesus loving the church. The church is not a perfect bride. There's no perfect bride. But Jesus loves the church. He gave himself up for the church. You know why Jesus is coming back? He's going to take his bride going to get the church and bring them home to heaven. Come on, somebody. Jesus loves you. Come on, church. Jesus loves the church. We are married to Jesus. If you are single, you are not incomplete because your husband is Jesus Christ. Do you know what Jesus is building? He didn't say, I will build my company. I will build my government. I will build my country. What did Jesus say? Come on, read it aloud. Jesus replied, I will build my church and the powers of hell will not conquer it. There is only one institution that will last forever. Not America, not government, not Europe, not Asia. The church will last forever. There's scandals everywhere happening to the church. It's not the perfect bride, but the church is the bride of Christ that he's perfect thing. And God is coming and loving his church. And the church is the one that God will use to bring Jesus here on earth. Amen. You want to have a heart of Jesus? Have a heart for your church. Amen. Have a heart for the house of God, for the move of God, for the, for the community of believers. And I challenge you specifically, invest and invite. Did you know 80% of people that you invite during Easter, they will come. That's why they are called CEO, Christmas and Easter only. <laughs> Let's make this moment. It's our Super Bowl church. It's the Christmas. It's a church Super Bowl. It's the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the greatest event in history. Who are you going to invite? What we're going to have, a Good Friday, it's heaven last word saying, and then three services, and I heard we're going to have, have an egg drop. Uh, one of the, uh, Josh, can you invite one of my friends, Josh, one of our awesome young leaders. What's going to happen to, about the egg drop? Explain what's going to happen. Okay, so um, something I did in elementary school that I thought would be a good idea for the kids at Charisma, just to give them something fun to do, is uh, we're going to have them build a structure during like the service or a container to protect an uncooked egg, and we're going to drop them off of the roof. They can build it by stuffing the box or making a parachute or whatnot, and the kids that protect their eggs get to throw them at me. And so uh, <laughs> I'm going to take one for the team, and we're going to just something to uh, bring more kids into wow. this church. And I, I, I think that this church is going to grow from the bottom up, from the kids up to the adults. And so we want to do something fun that's going to bring more kids back into the church when their friends invite them on Easter. So. Wow. But I have a problem just Steve broke my egg. <laughs> so this is a simple way. Invite them. Invite them to this event, 9.30, 11 a.m., and 5 p.m. You know why the power of invitation? Uh, Melanie was just telling me this morning at 9.30. Yeah, she invited Josh. Hey, come to my church. And as you all know, Josh, love on him now. He gets, he gets saved, got revived. And one of the mighty one leader that God is using in our church. Yeah. The power of invitation. Investment that will last for eternity. 
I challenge you. You want to invest for something that will last not just five years, not just 50 years, not just 500 years. You, when you bring us somebody to Jesus Christ, it's forever. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. Jesus cares about the church. He loved on him. He gave his only son for the church. And he's coming back to get the bride. Now, let's talk about what Jesus doesn't care about. If Jesus cares for something, for the crowd in the church, you know, I, must, I don't care what Jesus doesn't care about. You know what Jesus doesn't care about? Let me ask you right now, before you put it down, uh, you put it on the screen, what, what is Jesus, uh, what do you think Jesus doesn't care about? You, there's already, the answer is right, one or you put it on the screen already. What do you think? Jesus doesn't care about, do you think Jesus cares about what kind of car that, that he drives when he was here on earth? Oh my gosh, I'm still riding on a donkey. When can I ride a, at least a horse? <laughs> right? But Jesus was here on earth. Jesus doesn't care about that, right? Jesus doesn't care about title. Yes. Do you know when Jesus was here on earth? Don't put me, uh, don't bring, put me title, title. I'm not about that. So let's, three things that America cares about, but Jesus doesn't care about. This is a worldview of Americans. Number one, materialism. Everybody say materialism. Materialism, materialism says the one with the most toys wins. You see that in the uh, bumper sticker, right? It's all about toys. Toddlers, then when they grow up, they still have their toys. It's more expensive, right? It's bigger. I'm, please, God is not against you having toys or having fun and having possessions in your life. God wants you to enjoy life. But God hates it when you live for those stuff. Because those things are temporal. If you make it your goal, instead of just an icing on the cake, you're missing the point. Listen to what Jesus said. Let's read this together, Charisma. Then he said to them, watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Wow. Do you think you got it made because you have all those stuff? Jesus said, watch out. Life is not about all those things. It's not about the abundance of possessions. In fact, Jesus gave this profit and loss statement. He said, what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world? And lose his own soul. Let's read it together, Charisma. What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? You know, sometimes we're just so much into materialism. Oh, look at my shoes. It's Giorgio Armani. Look at my jeans. Giorgio Armani. Look at my belt. Giorgio Armani. Look at my wallet. I have no money. But I have a brand name. I, I'm, I'm, so, church, listen to me carefully. It's not God is a... Have fun. If you have that, have fun. I'm happy for you. But don't make it your goal. Amen? Amen. Don't live for those things. Because what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? I want you to look at the picture of greed. He who dies with the most toys still dies. I'm a pastor. I've done so many funerals. I've never seen a hearse fooling a U-Haul. When you die, you leave it all behind. You leave it all behind. But here's the thing. But you know what? You could invest ahead in eternity and send it ahead of you. What you do for God, what you do for the church, what you do loving people, you're investing that will last forever. You're sending it ahead of you in eternity. Amen, somebody. So, just a reminder for all of us. Even New York Times, this is not a Bible uh, magazine or a literature. You know what New York Times says about wealth? Wealth is not the key to happiness. Let's read this together. The number one factor in human happiness is interpersonal 
relationship. It's relationship. That's what makes people happy. Let, let's continue this. Let's continue in the, ne the next slide. So joining a group that meets just once a month produces the same happiness gain as doubling your income. New York Times saying, hey, Americans, American dream is now a nightmare. Wealth is not everything. It's not the key to happiness. Try going to mission trip to, to third world country. You see those kids, they don't have much. But they're smiling, they're happy. I was telling earlier in the Philippines, if you, somebody get laid off, it's a celebration. Hey, friends, come on, let's have a party. I just got laid off. And they have drink, and they'll eat. And for one week, they don't care. They don't have unemployment. They don't, hey, here, when somebody get laid off, may the, there's a police trying to escort you. <laughs> you don't know what you're going to do, right? Totally different perspective. Jesus doesn't care about materialism. You know what else Jesus doesn't care about? Jesus doesn't care about hedonism or pleasure. Let's continue. Jesus doesn't care about hedonism. Hedonism basically tells what? If it feels good, do it. If you live your life based on what you feel, I'm telling you right now, you're going to be sad. You're going to be sad. Because your feelings come and go. And here's the reality check. Sometimes the feel that you're good doing it or you like doing it, now you're bored. Have you experienced that? Sometimes you feel like, oh, I like doing this. Now you're bored doing that. You want to go to another high. You want to do something new, something adrenaline rush. Hedonism, if it feels good, do it. God is not against pleasure. Come on, somebody. Jesus is a happy God. He's, he's a, he, kids want to hang around with him. But that's not the point of life. Listen to what Jesus says. Let's read this together, Charisma. I want you to read this with me. <clears throat> Flee also youthful lust. Pursue what? Righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of what? A pure heart. Flee lust. Flee 50 shades of gray. Flee those things. Pursue righteousness. Faith, love, peace, along with those who call on the Lord with a pure heart. Listen to this verse. I want you to read this with me until we go to the next slide. This verse is very powerful. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Spirit. Everybody say with me, righteousness, righteousness peace, peace, joy. That is God's blueprint for your life. This is what the world's blueprint Happiness is number one. Why are you doing this? It makes me happy. Why are you doing that? I want to be happy. Did you know happiness is the goal? I want to be happy. I want to be happy. I want to be happy. Okay, what's happening? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? And those people who made it rich, who got it to the top, and they, they got it made, they're happy. Sometimes they found out, oh, even though I'm happy, I don't have peace of mind. But now, you know, Brad Pitt is saying, I, I've done everything. I, I achieved those uh, achievements. And now I'm after is I want to have peace of mind. So I want to have peace of mind. Have peace. Why do I have peace of mind? Because I want to get right with God. Because they forgot they have a soul. Why don't you take care about this? Take care of what's in the inside of you first. Get right with God and you will have peace. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. You have peace of mind. You have peace of God. And then that's where happiness comes. It's totally different. It's not about eating and drinking and things like that. Happy, 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 happy. No, get right with the Lord. And then the peace of God comes. And the joy and the happiness comes. Another thing that we want you to see here. Jesus doesn't care about. Everybody say humanism. Everybody say it's all about me. That's, that's humanism, right? God cares about humanity. But God doesn't care about humanism. Basically, what is humanism is a worship of yourself. You are your own truth. Nobody will tell you what to do. The verse for the humanism is this. Proverbs 12, 12. Read this along with me. There is a way which seems right to a man and appears straight before him. But at the end, it is what? There is a way. 
It seems right. So that's what people say. Don't tell me. Don't force your religion on me. Don't force your Bible on me. I'm going to decide what's true for me. What may be true for you is not true for me. What is right for you is wrong for me. What's wrong for me is right for you. So uh, let's just have peace and let's just sing, we are the world, okay? And I will decide. It seems right for a man. It, it seems straight. But before him, the end is distraction. You know, a classic, for, a classic example is this. When I first came to Seattle, I went to EMP. How many have been to EMP? Experience Music Project. And I look at those uh, paraphernalia, those history of rock and roll, Janis Joplin, Jimi Hendrix, Elvis Presley, uh, Notorious B.I.G., wearing all their clothes. And you know what the thought comes to my mind is this. There is a way it seems right for men. It appears straight before him, but at the end of it, the way of death. You know, all those rock stars and heroes, they have one thing in common. They all died of suicide, drug abuse, depression. They died of suicide. Listen to me carefully. Please tell the person, say, say, say he's your friend, not your enemy. This is the world's way. It's wide. Living large is wide. But the end is a tunnel that leads to death. This is Jesus' way. Narrow. Narrow. That's why sometimes they call us narrow-minded. Just narrow. Keep it straight. Narrow. Narrow. But the end is wide. Heaven. The world's way is large, but it gets narrow, and it leads to death. Humanism is it's all about me. You know, Jesus doesn't care about two. I'll be stepping some of uh, your shoes right now. Or put some, I get offended, so I'm sorry. Political power. Jesus doesn't care about politics. When Jesus was on earth, he did not dethrone the Roman Empire. He didn't, he didn't come to set up a government. Listen, listen to what Jesus said. Let's read it together. Jesus, knowing that they intended to come and make him king by force, withdrew again to a mountain by himself. Did you notice that? Jesus is not into politics. That's why this is just a piece of, uh, this is PJ talking, okay? This is my observation. I've never seen pastors became successful politicians. Have you seen one? How many times Pat Robertson attempted to become the U.S. president? In the Philippines, how many times we see this pastor, a, a brother Eddie, attempted to become the president? When God called you to be the pastor, that's the highest office. You don't need to step down. Pastors, you're not voted by the people. God chose you and appointed you and anointed you and God elevated you. That's the highest office. If God calls you to be a politician and you're a Christian, praise God for you. But I've never seen those pastors say, I want to be in politics so I could influence. You know what? You could influence the world not in politics. You could influence the world by loving people. By loving people. Now, PJ, you mean to say we're not involved in activism? No, I'm involved in activism. I'm for social justice. I run every year against human trafficking. I've, I've been to, to, to Vienna, so the United Nations, and, uh, and I see those abuse kids there, and, and, and I'm part of those movements th that they were doing there about human trafficking. That's my social cause. But I'm not going to be trafficking and picketing and things like that. Here's the thing I want you to read from Philip Yancey because this is very important. From Jesus, I learned that whatever activism I get involved in, it must not drive out love or else I betray the kingdom of heaven. Jesus came to have to do a revolution, different revolution. This is Jesus' revolution. Look at this. It's a love thing. He changed the world by doing something. Loving people, dying for people. That is Jesus. Doesn't care about politics. And listen to what Jesus said. Let's read it together. John 18, 36. Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. 
Jesus doesn't care about title. Jesus doesn't care about position. In fact, Jesus said this, 1 Peter 5, let's read together. Not lording it over those entrusted to you, but be what? Examples of the flock. Everybody say, not lording. not lording. Meaning, not bossing around, but be examples of the flock. Jesus is the shepherd, right? And we are his what? Sheep, right? So the opposite of sheep, they're goats. Have you seen goats? In, in where I came from, the Philippines, there are a lot of goats. I'm telling you, America, they don't have a lot of goats here. Goats are very selfish animal. I think they invented the selfie. You know the goat? They're, they're, they're always on top. They're always fight for position. And it's true. Look at it. They all, somebody should be on top. No one will be on the same level. Somebody had to be the pack leader. And look at this picture of these two goats. They don't care if they fall down. Look at the next slide. Look, look at this. They don't care if they fall down. As long as they're, they're on top. Right? Because that's their nature. But we're not goats. We're sheep. You know, I believe, how many of you watch the, the TV series Undercover Boss? Undercover Boss, Undercover Boss. The series about is like a uh, CEO, uh, owner pretending to be the lowliest, like a servant, and then he will reveal, hey, I'm the, I own this company. You know who started that? Jesus is the original Undercover Boss. He owns it all. The creator of the universe, he owns it all. He came down. The lowest form, being a servant. This is, my, this is my inspiration about my Jesus. I, I, I always see this. Jesus journeyed from the top to the bottom to bring us from the bottom to the top. Yeah. That's Jesus' journey. He came down from heaven to the highest. And he went to the lowest of low. He went to hell to die for our sins so that we can we bring us up from the bottom to the top. This is what Jesus doesn't care about. Do you still want to have a heart of Jesus? Yes. Don't care about title. Don't care about position. Don't, don't, don't be stressed out. Oh, I don't have this new. I don't have this. I drive this old car. No, please. Uh, you could live with that. Don't get into debt just because of that. Amen, somebody. Amen. Here is the thing. Our attitude should become like Jesus. Let's read this together. Your attitude should be the kind what was shown by Jesus Christ, who though was, did not demand and cling to his rights as God, but lay aside his mighty power and glory, taking the disguise of a slave Becoming what? Man. Like men. Tell the person next to you, your attitude should be like Jesus. What else did Jesus do? Let's continue this. What else? Let's read it together. He humbled. stopped. Everybody say, humble himself. humble himself. Now let me give you a piece of advice. There are only two plans. Everybody say, plan A. Plan, a. plan, B. plan B. This is plan A. Plan A, everybody say, humility. Just humble yourself. Everybody say plan B. Plan B. Humiliation. Humiliation. You have the choice. What plan are you going to take? Plan B, you'll be humiliated. God's, God is against proud people. You know what's plan A? You humble yourself before God. And you know what will happen? Let's continue. Even further going far as actually to the... To the criminal's death, look, we're not done with that verse. Can we back off, please? To the criminal's death on the cross, yet it was because of this, God raised him up to the heights of heaven and gave him what? The name, which is above every other name. That At that name, look at the next verse. It says here, at that name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. And every time shall confess what? Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Check this out. There will come a time, as we all know, people will bow down to Jesus. In heaven, on earth right now, 
And even under the earth, there will come a time even Satan will bow down to Jesus, not because of worshiping Jesus. He will just bow to Jesus and say, I lost. You win. You're God, and I'm not. But praise God for us today who choose to bow our knee to Jesus Christ and declare Jesus Christ is Lord. This weekend, I, 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 I'm really emotional this weekend. Uh, my wife sees me looking at those family albums, looking at those pictures, looking at the pictures of my kids. You know why? Because this weekend, I'm turning 50 years old. Yes. I have a proof. I already have my invitation to join the EAARP club. But I have a problem. If I use the card, you know, my daughter said, Dad, you will have a problem. Because if you use your card, that card, they will say, you're lying. Maybe you just want a discount. <laughs> oh, some of you are too slow. You don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> and my other daughter was teasing me, Dad, you're a member of the ARP. said, what's an ARP? He said, ancient artifacts relic person. <laughs> <laughs> Why <laughs> she just made that up? Arp. I get emotional because half a century. Only half a century. And looking back, 50 years. And I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm planning to live till I'm 100 years old. Another 50 years. That's my goal. Here's the thing. So I have a self-reflection. I've been praying and, then see, and reflecting. I'm making like uh, my own... Uh, uh, what you call that, a little bit of history, cuento ng sequenta, story of my 50 years old, things like that. And so many ups and downs, so many, so many times I could have been dead by now. I'm telling you because of the devil. But God spared my life. And when I was a little child, when I gave my life to Jesus, there's this song that resonated in my heart. I don't know, when I was a boy, I have no other ambition but to be a pastor. I don't know. Maybe it's because I grew up in a pastor's family. Like, what's your ambition? I want to be a pastor. I want to be a pastor. And God put the desire in my heart. And now when I gave my heart when I was a little boy, it was through a DBBS, Daily Vacation Bible School. And we were watching the salty movie, Kids Praise. And that one, what really broke my heart is when this song said, Lord, make me a servant, humble and meek. Lord, let me lift up those who are weak. And may the prayer of my heart always be, make me a servant, make me a servant, make me a servant today. And even right now, that's still my heart's desire. Because my Jesus, my boss, whom I serve, is the greatest servant of all. It doesn't really matter how many serving me. That's not the point. What really matters, how many am I serving and leading, loving, lifting up to Jesus? And I pray you want to have a heart like Jesus. Be a servant. Serve people. Love them them. Oh my gosh, people will hurt you. People will deny you. People will ostracize you. People, of course. That's why they need the love. You will get hurt. I'm telling you, when you're involved with people, you just love on them. Serve them. Believe the best for them. Dream a dream for them when they cannot dream a dream for their life. I'm telling you, it's worth the investment. What Jesus cares about, He cares about the crowd. He cares about the church. What Jesus doesn't care about, He doesn't care about humanism. He doesn't care about you, hedonism. He doesn't care about materialism. He cares about how many am I loving and bringing to this revolution. Would you stand on your feet today?
Lord, we've been studying this journey with Jesus, the hero, the lover, the master, the Lord, the champion. You are everything to us. And today, Lord, we don't want you to hear these words. These people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Where is your heart today? God says, guard your hearts because that's where the issues come from. And God is after your heart. He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart. Even before He said, your mind or your body. He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart. We want to be like Jesus. Jesus cares about the crowd. They are not a bother to Him. He welcomed them. He loved on them. He had compassion on them. He said, they're harassed and helpless. They're like sheep without a shepherd. That's what Jesus looks when he, he feels when he sees the crowd. Let's love the crowd, church. I know they don't talk like we do. We, they act differently. They offend and they're bad mouth and the F-bombs flying all over when you hang out with them. But that's what Jesus died for. He cares about those people. Love on them. Jesus cares about the church. He said, the church is like my wife. It's a husband and wife relationship. I'll do everything for my wife. I die for my wife. I love my wife. I'll protect my wife. Because that's my church. I'm, I'm married to my church. That God is hard about the church. You want to invest that will last forever? More than 50 years, 500 years? Invest your life in the church of God. That's the only movement that will last forever. You want to have the heart of Jesus? Jesus doesn't care about materialism. He who dies with the most toy wins. He who dies with the most toy still dies. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and yet loses his soul? Jesus doesn't care about hedonism, about pleasure. He wants you to be happy in a holy way, in a healthy way, not in a sickening way, in a sinful way, lifestyle. Jesus doesn't care about humanism. He cares about humanity, but not humanism. It's all about me. It's all about who's serving me. It's I'm above you. You're under me. No. Jesus journeyed from the top to the bottom so that we could bring us from the bottom to the top. Lord, make me a servant. Lord, let me lift up those who are weak. And let the prayer of my life always be. Lord, make me a servant. Make me a servant, Lord. Make me a servant today. Today, I just want you to pray right now. At least one or two or three people in your life. I want you to pray right now. God is putting a picture in your mind right now. Someone right now. That you know that you know that person dies right now. He, he just goes straight to hell because of not believing in the Lord or uh, not accepting Jesus. I want you to pray for that person right now. You are his friend or her friend. I want you to pray for that person right now. Hallelujah. I want you to pray God's blessing and favor upon those people. Hallelujah. And I want you to do something else. Text them today or tomorrow or sometime. Just text them, I'm in church today and the Lord reminded me of you right now and I just want to know, how are you? I'm praying for you. Simple things like that. And then said, are you free on Easter? Would you like to come to church with me? So try it. They might say no, they might say, but at least you tried. I would rather try and fail than fail to try. Try it. Make that text, that simple invitation will change a person's destiny. That's why let's stay. being a servant. Father, I thank you for this time. 
that you have given me this utmost opportunity and honor to be serving the people that I love, that you die for, that I care about, called Charisma Christian Family Center, Lord. I just pray as we grow older, as we grow further, as we grow to, to heights of glory, may we, may we be made humble. May our heart be, be still soft, not hardened, because people sometimes will, will, will offend us. People sometimes will drop us. But God, give us that heart of Jesus. And I just pray your best for us, Lord. You're not a user. You're a blesser. When you use us, you want our lives to be blessed and God I pray today thank you for this reality check for this reminder oh God that may we be concerned about what Jesus is concerned about and may we ignore what Jesus ignores about in Jesus name and all of God's name say Amen let's give the Lord a mighty clap of praise today